Welcome back, Fantasy Fiction Fanatics. It's great to see you again, and I hope you're doing well. Today's class is going to be a little bit different because it is going to be a writing video, and it is going to be a writing video that is on my personal writing process and how I go about doing my stories when I have my own personal writing project. Thank you so very, very much to the subscriber who commissioned it from me. I really, really appreciate your support and your interest in my personal writing. Um, I have mentioned to a couple of people over on the Discord or those who have personally chatted with me and asked me um, about my personal writing. Uh, I do have a short story that I am pretty much done with and in the process of hoping to get it published. We will see. Um, and that got some uh, the subscriber interested in my writing process and how I go about writing things. Hopefully this video can give you some hints or tips for yourself if you are looking to change up your writing process or maybe just something that you think is interesting and you might want to try for yourself. Um, otherwise you'll just learn kind of a little bit about me and how I do my writing for my personal projects. So hopefully you enjoy this class as well. Um, I guess let's go ahead and just get started with it. Um, so to start off with any project, I usually am inspired to start a story based on a concept or a world. So usually if I get inspired by a concept, I switch my thought process over to, okay, what world do I want this idea to take place in? Um, otherwise, I have an idea like a magic system idea or like a world like, oh, where this is going to happen. So I always usually start with some kind of base thing that inspires me. And then I go ahead and work on the world building first. For me, that's just, it helps me because if I don't know what world I'm starting with and what kind of place I am going to be trying to build and where I want it to be, it's very hard for me to jump in with the idea and with the characters if I don't even know what the parameters are for the world that I'm working with. And that's just a, a personal thing that I have to start with. Um, I know that other people might choose to start with uh, an idea and just start writing and see where it goes, or maybe, you know, they really like a character and they just see what the character does by writing about it. But for me, I always need to start with some kind of basic prep work. And it's usually one to three sessions of writing where I just go ahead and jot down all my ideas about how I want the world to work, any magic I want worked, where this you know beginning place is going to be like, how big of a world it's going to be, what kind of um, deities or mythology is going to be in it. Um, if it is going to be like a urban fantasy, I choose like what city I'm going to be in and um, I don't necessarily do like a whole bunch of research off the bat for that location if I don't know much about it. Um, I'm more just try and figure out the basis of like, okay, if it's our world, how is magic going to work? And what kind of creatures am I going to have in it? If it's a fantasy world, what kind of fantasy world is it going to be? Is it going to be like an epic high fantasy? Is it going to be a unique one? What kind of creatures are going to live in this world? And I don't necessarily plot out like, you know, the whole thing. Like sometimes I have to think of ideas on the spot. But I usually do, at least if there's going to be magic, the magic system. I usually try and do um, any kind of mythology that I'm going to do that's going to be unique. Um, as well as maybe what kind of like outlining of like where I think the locations are going to be if it's a big world. Um, at least if that's what I've thought about right away. Sometimes some of those details come a little bit later. But a lot of times I try and get at least the big, big things about the world down um, and I script that all out for myself so I can have it as I'm writing and I can kind of understand what my parameters are going to be with working with. Um, I also do usually do the main character or the main two or three characters that I know for certain are going to be in the story at least at the start um, and I kind of do, do a little description of what I think they're going to look like, the basic personality traits I'm hoping that they're going to have of course, that doesn't always end up being the case, as I'm sure most writers who have written know they kind of run away on their own. But kind of what I think what I want the character to be like, what I kind of want them to look like, as well as a background, a little bit of background of why um, they're there, how they got there, maybe some conflict that they've had, whatever it is, I kind of write just a short little background on them, so at least I have a little bit of a template to work with. Um, so that's usually where I start, is just one to three sessions of me trying to figure out 
what it is that I'm trying to start working with, what world I'm working with, at least the big major plots of it. There are many times I'm writing and I'm writing and I, an idea comes to me and be like, yes, I wanna add that into the world. Or yes, I wanna change this about it and make it this way. And I will go back to those notes and I will make new corrections or new additions as I think of them. But I just want the basic outline of what this world is and how I want to utilize the magic or fantasy elements in it as well as the beginnings of a couple of main characters that I want to kind of get a sense of who I want them to try and be as I start. If they change then they change but at least then I have a little bit to work with for myself at the beginning. Okay. So next, after I have those couple of sessions where I feel like I really got a sense of what I'm starting with, with the world, with a couple of characters, um, possibly an antagonist, if I thought of an antagonist, then I go ahead and jump in with whatever my idea was, whether it was the world, whether it was the characters, whatever it is, I kind of think, um, or the idea of whatever basis I want. If it's an idea, I'll usually start with like where I think that original thought came to me as, like where I felt like that beginning was for that idea. Um, otherwise, I usually am by after we're discovering the world and doing all this stuff, I kind of have a basic idea of where, a, a scene that I want to start with, even if it's not, you know, going to be the beginning in the end. I usually have some kind of something that I'm like, ooh, I want to go ahead and start with that particular thing. And when I start, I am somebody who's very traditional. I start with handwriting something. I had a notebook and a pen, specifically pen because I have found that um, pencil does not last as well um, as pen does and so sometimes I want to reference things far back after I'm like you know three notebooks later um, I want to reference something back just because I had an idea of something I previously wrote um, at one point and I'm trying to get that idea back and I'm trying to figure out what it is and so sometimes when you go back with pencil they're all like smeared and it's faded and it's just not as good so even though I really like writing with pencil and it would make things a little bit easier for me um, pen is usually what I have I write with now just because it um, lasts longer in case I need to go back and reference anything and I reason I love handwriting things I know a lot of people are like uh, in my life too, like even my parents are like, you should really just type it out. You'd save so much time. But one, it's part of my process, which I will explain. And two, I feel most inspired to write when it's handwritten. Like I just love the feel of writing pen to paper. It's part of really like what inspires me. It's part of the creative uh, process for me in my brain. It's like, I never think, let me go to my computer and write. I always think, let me go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pen and write. So for me, it always, always, always has to start. That's always where I'm most creative and most can get my thoughts down um, is through writing on a piece of paper. Um, and I do have a couple of pages open. I bookmarked them so I could show you kind of my process when I write. And so I have the notebook and I only write on one side. I only write on the right side, right? <laughs> yes, at first I was like, wait, what? Is that the right or left? But yes, I always write on the right side because then, and this is a trick that I actually learned in college, believe it or, or not college, high school, believe it or not. Um, I had a writing teacher who had us do this. Is She always had us write on one side and then the other side, you make notes on things that are on this side directly across from it. So you can see, uh, hopefully, if you can see over there, I've got these little things on this side. I've got them on like this one as well where I've got all my writing here and then across from it I have uh, whatever notes I was thinking of at this time and you know this is always based on like at the t moment I was writing and writing and writing and then I make like a whole paragraph or two paragraphs and then I realize oh my gosh I should have mentioned this or oh my gosh I think this needed a bit more development or I should have added this or you know, it's great here, like whatever. I kind of have a moment where it's like, this should be in here. Or sometimes I'm several pages later and I'm thinking, I want to change something so that way this moment can have this in it, but I need this back there in order to make that work. So I can just write directly across from it any of those thoughts from the area that I want it to be in or whatever area it pertains to and jot down whatever it is that I'm thinking in the moment and then I can just keep moving forward with the story. Because um, it's always best to just, when you're in the moment, when you're in the flow, to just 
keep moving forward. Just get the ideas down. Uh, don't worry so much about how it's structured. Don't worry if it's perfect. Don't worry about the writing because that's obviously can all be done in editing. Um, so my goal is to try and keep the flow going, but to still remember the thoughts that I had when I was writing. I don't want to lose those because I want to obviously come back and get those. Or I made changes later because I expect I'm thinking in my brain, I mentioned it earlier because I'm going to add it. Um, so to make things work, I have to make sure I remember what those additions were needed. Um, so that's just the trick for me is that the first draft always comes where I write on the one side of the page and I leave room for notes on the other side of the page, um, whatever it is that I end up thinking about. Um, and then we've got my uh, Obviously, I'm working in pen. So, I mean, then we've got my, my other self-made kind of um, marks that are not necessarily like regular corrective marks that I use for myself on things that when I'm writing, I need to change or do. So, uh, for example, I've got this page here. Um, and I always make a, like, box around it. I don't know how well you can see this here. Maybe I'll go ahead and zoom you in here so you can really see. You can see how I kind of have all these little markings on here. Um, you can kind of see hopefully that I have like boxes around things. I've got circles around words. I've got things brought, crossed out and row above it. Um, I've got complete lines at some things that are crossed out on certain pages. Um, like this one, I've got just complete sentences just crossed out and all that. So that happens because I'm working in pen and I can't erase and change things, but there's stuff that I want to remember when I'm doing my editing. So for example, the boxes around things are usually things that I'm like, did I even spell that right? <laughs> Cause I'm not the best speller. Um, I am an English major that cannot spell, but I've been told that, you know, spelling is only uh, memorization and so it shouldn't reflect me on my poorly on my writing and I try and keep that in mind. But yes, word uh, spelling corrections and stuff is my best friend. So when I'm handwriting, I'm just, I'll, if I can't figure out how to spell it, I'll just sound it out, box it over and be like, check the spelling on this when you type it up kind of thing. When I circle words, it usually means I'm not really sure if that's the word I want to use. Let me try and see later if that word actually sounds right or if I need to find another one. Let me see anything I crossed over and wrote above is because I changed the word. Cross things out is because I'm just taking that all out or I, you know, don't need it. Or I started a sentence, realized that's not what I wanted to do, crossed it out. Um, I usually put brackets or parentheses over things that I kind of want to read, look at again. So I've got kind of this own little system that I've got for my own... Um, trying to remember like when I'm going back for editing purposes, like this is stuff I wanted to look at or this is stuff I wanted to change, that kind of stuff. So always have all these things going on in my first draft where I'm just trying to get the thoughts down on the paper. The general outline of like, hey, this is something. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be right. It just has to be what at this moment is coming out of my mind as the story is. Um, so it's very sloppy. It's very messy. You tried to read it from there you'd be like I gotta really sit and focus on it but it really works for me and it means that I have a way of feeling the pen in the paper at least for the first moments that I'm writing it to be really inspired and to be able to make any changes that I need to later and I know that they're gonna come later so I just kind of whip it out on the page while I'm in that moment of creativity okay so next is the editing process and of course editing means multiple edits like this is not just a one edit thing but my first edit is always typing it into the computer so I've got the section done that I want done and I'm gonna now try and edit it or I've got you know the short story done and now I'm gonna try and edit it whatever it, it may be so I go I flip back to the page one I do actually I forgot to mention this I do actually number my pages for either chapter wise or if it's short story, just the short story wise, I always number them in the corner so I know where I'm starting and this is where I'm ending for the break. So um, 
I flip back to page one and I start typing, 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 and I read what I wrote. <laughs> Obviously, I read what I wrote. So I can automatically start where I have it laid out. I can see both sides. I start reading and I can do a first basic edit while typing. Not saying I'm doing anything super sophisticated or super crazy, but I add in all of the things I had notes on. I go, I'm going, I'm going. I, oh, okay, I see another little like bracket over here with uh, my little notes about what I wanted to add or change or whatever. And so then I can add those in. I can be kind of creative in this moment as well. As I'm typing it up, I make those changes or those additions or whatever else may be. Or if I made a question saying, hey, I want to check that this is really what I want to do here, I can go think about it, reread it, see what it feels like, see what I want, and incorporate it into the, uh, um, into the computer as I'm typing it. I can also read, read it and go, that sounds really weird. That is not how that should be written. And I can make those initial changes. Or I can even be like, I don't like that. I want to take that out. Or I can be like, um, you know, that's not how that is spelled with all those boxes and everything like that, and I can change it. That's not the word I want. I'm going to change it. Um, I want to restructure that sentence because that just doesn't work the way I thought it did when I first wrote it down. So for me, that first edit is always just taking what I wrote with all these markings on it, with all these notes, transferring it into the computer, and making those initial changes. And it's quick. It's easy. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily that it's quick. I mean quick in the fact that it's not like I have to spend hours thinking up what I'm going to do or thinking does that sound right. It's just initially what I wrote, I, it's like maybe two, three days later or however long later, um, I'm finally typing it up and it's like, hey, I'm reading this now and that does not work. <laughs> or hey, um, I wanted to add this in here, let me go ahead and type in those two extra sentences or in that little detail adding a word there, whatever it may be, to kind of give it a little bit more of a blemish, a little bit more of a thought out feel to it. So initially just writing down, writing down, writing down, whatever seems to come to mind, not paying, not worrying too much about how it sounds or what it is, just the events and what kind of things I want people to say. And then I come in and I type up and I'm like, okay, let's actually work on how this sounds and make it a little bit more um, impressive just from the first typing. And then of course, all editing from there is on the computer. Sometimes I do print out the um, pages and go over it handwritten, make my notes handwritten and go back in the computer. But most of the time it usually is me reading through and making the changes as I'm reading it on the computer for however many edits I feel I need to do. But before each edit, I do make sure I always step away from it for at least a day or two um, just to make sure I have that fresh mindset when I come back to it. Because, of course, as the author, I'm always going to think that I know what it says. I already know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but that's not always what's on the page. I have learned that very... Uh, I have learned that it's been kind of beaten into me a little bit through different um, corrections that I've had done. My dad often um, helps me when I am trying to edit something, and he's very much has a critical eye on things. And... When he reads it and he makes like you know a, uh, his feedback for me, he has kind of really shown me that a lot of times when I write something, I think it says something and it really doesn't. Or I think it says something particular and it really says something different than what I think it says. So I have really learned that what I think is on the page is not necessarily on that page. Um, or it's not clear or whatever else. So having a couple of days break for me, really helps me refresh myself to have a little bit less of that already thinking that it's on the page moment, if that makes sense. So as I'm reading it, I'm reading it more as a, ba a bystander, someone who's never read it, than the writer who already knows what I'm hoping is on the page and just filling it in with my mind, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, I, always, I would suggest to anybody, I feel like taking breaks before editing is always really good. You should. Um, I don't think it's really helpful when you just write it and then try and do an edit. I think you, a lot of people would normally see what they feel like is on the page and not what actually is on the page. Now a little last but not least, I would like to go over a little bit of like tools or things that help me when I'm in my writing process that is not me actually doing writing on the story. 
Um, by that, I kind of mean that I always try, before I'm writing a session, I always try to do reading, whatever my current book is reading, um, unless, of course, I think that book is bad and don't want to emulate that writing style. But for the most part, whatever I'm currently reading, um, I'll just try and read maybe a chapter, maybe if, depending on how long the chapters are, maybe half a chapter, whatever I feel like is a good amount of time, you know, maybe 20 minutes. Um, just because that helps me get in the rhythm of the writing. You kind of are absorbing somebody else's writing style, sure, um, and you're kind of feeling the rhythm of like, okay, this is the writing canter. Um, just in general, it doesn't necessarily have to be your own writing style to get you in the mood of thinking about how words are strung together. Um, and especially if it's somebody that I really enjoy the writing style of and I would like to have that kind of writing style or that good of a writing style, that's exceptionally good for me as well as when I read it. I'm kind of already in the mind zone of like what I've read in their book and the style that they've had. Um, it kind of will just influence and make me feel more inspired and creatively motivated. Um, so then before I start to write, I always try and see if I can make time to do a little bit of reading just to get my mind in the zone, to be in that space, and then I go to write my own story if that timing is available. Then um, externally from that, I do have a couple of books that I'd like to show you that I think are very helpful, at least for me. Um, I like to reference them or when I'm in the middle of a project, there's one in particular that I feel like has a lot of exercises that helps you kind of know what you should maybe be doing to try and really deeply dive in to your writing and make it better and the editing and all that kind of stuff. So first is a book that was recommended to me by a creative writing teacher in college and it's called A Dash of Style, The Art and Mastery of Punctuation. So this is a grammar book for creative writers. So it's not necessarily going to be strictly good on like a uh, perfect punctuation that you would do like for like a research assignment it's more since you know as a creative writer you don't always put punctuation exactly where you would in a normal writing circumstance so this helps you kind of know a little bit more about how you should do punctuation as a creative writer and how it can help you emote different um, ideas from different kind of punctuation um, i do know he does has done a couple other books but i don't know particularly of them. I haven't tried them out yet. Um, but then this one has stuff like that. It talks about the period, the comma, the semicolon, um, the colon. Uh, we've got like parentheses, quotation marks, that kind of stuff. So it's all basic grammar stuff, but more about how to think about it in a creative writing sense. So I do like this, especially because grammar is not my most strong suit. <laughs> Again, Spelling and grammar are not the strongest skills that I have, even though I'm an English major, I still need to practice and keep up with my grammar skills and that kind of stuff. So usually grammar is the stuff that I miss and somebody else is like, yeah, you missed that there. And I'm like, gosh darn it. <laughs> Why? Why do commas have to be so hard? Um, but yeah, so if you're someone like me who struggles with grammar, um, that book might help you and be able to give you some perspective, maybe uh, a little bit of like tips on like what to try out, that kind of stuff. Um, next one is called The Wonder Book. And I really, really like this one. This one is by Jeff Vandermeer. Oh, and I hope I mentioned that The Dash of Style uh, was by Nolan, uh, Noah Lukeman. Sorry if I forgot to mention his, the author's name. Uh, but Wonder Book, The Illustrated Guide to Creating Imaginative Fiction by Jeff Vandermeer. I believe that's how you would say his name. Um, it's a really giant book. This was actually given to me by a friend um, for Christmas one year. I haven't been able to explore it as much as I'd like, but it's really cool. It's got also, as it said, it's an illustrative guide. So it's got nice pictures in it and stuff like that. But this has a lot of talk about how to write uh, fiction um, or fantasy fiction a lot, it's how to do unique features. It's got a lot of those um, things kind of jotted out in illustrative form. So you get the words as well as the pictures to kind of have both visual and interpretive uh, learning. Um, you know, talks about beginning and endings, narrative design, uh, characterization. So there's a lot of ideas and different things about just writing fiction in general that it gives me thinking, gets me 
you know, inspired to want to try things out, to try and figure out things. So reading books about uh, writing actually does help me inspire me, helps me be creative, helps me kind of think about it in a new way, a new perspective, and then I'm like, okay, I want to dive in and try it and read, uh, write something. So if I'm stuck or having some writer's block or maybe I haven't written in a while and I just need something to kind of kickstart me, um, something like this I think is really, really helpful uh, just to try and get you thinking again and get you more in the creative mood. And then last but not least is my favorite of the books. I am a little bit biased, but um, for the reason why, and I'll tell you that in a second. Uh, but also it is a very, very helpful book and I find that for actual um, writing exercises, especially for your story, this is the best one. And it is called The Fantasy Fiction Formula. So it is specifically for fantasy fiction writers. And it's by Deborah Chester. And the reason I'm a little biased toward this book is because Jim Butcher, who is my favorite author, as many of you might know since I have mentioned it before, um, this is, the, uh, Deborah Chester was his teacher that really helped him start learning how to write fantasy fiction and led to him being uh, a writer of the Dresden Files. Um, so I'm a little bit biased because it's related to my favorite author. <laughs> Um, but also, you know, uh, he has this um, foreword at the beginning, which is hilarious. Um, anybody who's read Jim Butcher, he, you will understand that this is totally his style at the beginning. But the foreword is done by Jim Butcher for this particular book. Um, and he says that this particular system of writing really helps him and has made him a really good writer that can actually finish complete books that are in his opinion, and apparently a lot of others since he's uh, published a lot of books, um, good writing and good books. It's got a lot of different exercises, a lot of things that actually relate to your particular story. So if you are struggling with your story or wanting to dive deeper into your story and your concept, give this book a try. I really highly recommend it. Um, because it gives you things that you can then think about for your own personal story, not just in a um, kind of third party way, like maybe the Wonder Book where it's just talking about a generalization. This one actually tells you how to deal with your own story. If I can get to the contents here. So first it talks about formulating a story plan. It talks about character design, viewpoints, dialogue, structure for scenes, for conflict, dilemma and decisions, and a lot more. There's tons more points here. But then when you go to the actual um, moment, so like formulating a, plan, a story plan, um, it tells you what your beginning tasks are and what you should think about and what you should know uh, before you start and how you should plan it out. It gives you um, different uh, charts on like exactly different things, types of hooks, um, how you should introduce different protagonists and things like that. And then if we get through to the end, we've got actual exercises to use for your story. So for this one, for formulating a story plan, it's got three different, yeah, three different drill exercises. So you've got your examples and you're talking about it and then it actually has a way for you to go to your own story and practice this. Give it a shot, see if it helps you. Um, you've got start for your characters for character design. Um, choo -choo, we got a bunch of information and then at the end, if I can get there, She's got a list, like right here we've got list, 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 and more lists of all these things that you should know about your characters. Oh, and look, more lists of, of things that you need to ask yourself about your, your character or things that should be in your knowledge bank about your character, even if it's not on the page. So. This one is really, really great to actually have exercises for particularly fantasy fiction. Um, so I really, really enjoy using this one when I'm struggling with my writing, wanting to know more about my characters maybe, maybe I'm not sure what to write about next. I can uh, pick one of those, read about it, and try and develop those sections better. So. That's pretty much my process in writing um, for creative projects that are personal for myself. 
I'd love to hear any of your tips, your tricks, anything that's in your process that's different than mine, why you like them, why you use it, um, anything like that. I'd just love to hear your own thoughts and feelings and um, hopefully some of the things that I mentioned maybe inspire you to give those things a try or to see what those might be like, like maybe the books, or maybe you want to try writing uh, on only one side of the paper <laughs> if you are someone who also is handwriting like me. Um, but either way, I just love to hear your thoughts and opinions about anything and everything for writing fantasy fiction. Okay, before we go ahead and finish up, let's go over our trivia question. Um, so if you go over to the blog, fantasyfictionfanatics.net, you can also join in in this trivia question. Uh, I try and upload it week, uh, weekly so we can always have a new question to go off of. Um, today is the answer was false for this past week. Um, congratulations to Terry, Dan, and Paul for having the correct answer. Though also, um, I did have three particular people who answered but only put their name, they didn't actually put the answer. So make sure that if you are um, wanting to submit your answer to the trivia question that you do uh, type in the bar or select whatever, if it's a one, uh, select one of these four items or whatever, uh, click your answer or type in the bar for your answer as well as typing in your name. So make sure to fill out both sections of the form so that way I can find out whether you are correct or not. So for Eric, Mike D, and I believe your name is Swen D, um, D for the last name. Um, congratulations if you guys did guess that it was false, but for me on my um, tally, it didn't say that you had an answer, it just listed your name. So I am not 100% sure on how to classify you. But if you did do the word false, or that was your guess, then congratulations, you also got the correction, uh, the answer correct. Ooh, if I could talk anymore. Um, so yeah, next time just make sure you fill in your answer as well as your name. Um, if you would like to participate on the question, uh, you will have to scroll down a little bit on the desktop in order to find the question and answer um, right on the right hand side. Uh, scroll down just a little bit on desktop, you'll see it there. If you're on mobile, you'll scroll almost all the way down and then you'll be able to see um, the question and the answer and below that if you ever miss finding out um, through the video or through the discord if you got the answer correct you are welcome to check underneath the question um, the new question and it will tell you last week's answer and who got it correct so thank you so very much to um, the commission from the subscription uh, subscriber today I really appreciate you um, asking me about my process and wanting me to do a video on it. I really hope that you enjoy it. Um, if you would like to uh, follow me on Facebook, you are welcome to do so. It is going to be slash fantasy fiction one. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you're welcome to do that as well, which is at fantasy fiction one. Um, you can see all my updates there as well as if you want to um, talk to me and down below with the comments is not the best place for you you can go ahead and direct message me there um, you can also talk to your fellow fantasy fiction fanatics or to me on the discord we would love to have you there the link for you is down below and we would be happy to chat with you and know about all your thoughts on fantasy so we will have over 40 people already over there chatting, having a good time, and uh, connecting with others who have similar interests on things as fantasy as well as non-fantasy related things, books, movies, music, all kinds of things we talk about over there and we'd love to have you. Um, I think that's about it. If you do head over to the blog for the trivia question, you can also check out any of the other content that I post on there, such as other book reviews, book recommendations, different... Um, ideas about fantasy or reading that I kind of discuss and debate for my own thoughts um, and would love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Please let me know if you'd like to see anything on the channel or on the blog. I'd be happy to do it for you. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!